This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, straight from down under. Secure your digital life. Can't you understand? I've wasted so much time chasing after you. And now I have something that's mine. I never thought I'd see the day. What happened to the invertebrate I used to know? Okay, look, last week was a huge undertaking. I had to do this because now I can. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about SpongeBob SquarePants, or more specifically, Plankton, one of the best and worst parts of the show. Plankton! Crabs! Plankton! Crabs! SpongeBob! Much like Peggy Hill, he is a double-edged sword. But unlike Peggy, he is one of the few good parts of the later seasons. We'll get there when we get there, okay boo? It seems that with my Spongebob videos, there's a recurring theme of characters who are tragic in nature. Mr. Krabs wanted to crawl out of poverty, and now he's putting his employees in the gutter. Squidward wants friendship and love in a promising artistic career, but he's stuck as an insecure, narcissistic cashier. Plankton is Plankton, in the sense that he's a weird mix out of these two. He has failed dreams, he walks a lonely road, the only road he has ever known, on the boulevard of broken dreams, and it's him who's holding himself back. It's not a bad boss or a society or anything, it's him. People think Squidward is the most relatable. <laughs> Y'all have not seen Plankton, so let's discuss. But first, I have to say something that needs to be said, and it might be a little controversial. Perhaps Plankton should not have gone to college. I know, it's crazy, but Plankton is a family man. What with his computer wife Karen and their dog Spot, a Plankton provides for his family. Maybe to show he cares, he should get Surfshark VPN. I know many of my viewers use the internet and are weary of their data being tracked. Well, Surfshark is here to help. For those of you unaware, Surfshark is an app and or browser extension that hides your data from prying eyes. I, I. And better yet, it gives you perks. Want to watch a certain movie, but it's banned where you live? Well, you can use Surfshark to change your location. You could be sitting in your living room in Cheyenne, Wyoming, but as far as Netflix knows, you're in London. Maybe if Plankton had Surfshark, he could successfully steal the Krabby Patty formula because his location would be hidden. And I know some of you might be saying, what about the cost? Well, hold your big meaty claws. For just one subscription, you can register to as many devices as you want. Use the code CATFISH to get 83% off your purchase and an extra three months free. And you can support the channel. Now on with the video. Basically, Plankton is a main character from Spongebob, in a weird way. Normally, he doesn't appear in every episode, but he's still one of the most well-known characters to come out of the show. He first appears in the episode Plankton, which establishes many of his base characteristics. It's a typical day at the Krusty Krab, when suddenly, a Krabby Patty begins to move on its own. Mr. Krabs, the Krabby Patty is haunted! Is it gonna plug up the toilets? Krabs discovers the Krabby Patty is not the spawn of Davy Jones' kitchenette. It's really being controlled by... Plankton! Hear me, Krabs. When I discover your formula for Krabby Patties, I'll run you out of business. I went to college! Samesies! Then current events happened, and I had to temporarily do Zoom University. Be lucky you did not get FOMO. Krabs tells SpongeBob that Plankton is bad news. He owns and operates the Chum Bucket, which is conveniently located across the street. Clearly, Plankton is compensating for something. In this case, his tiny height, not his microscopic pe- Basically, Plankton wants to seal the Krabby Patty formula, use it to improve his recipe of chum, and put the Krusty Krab out of business, and will do whatever it takes to accomplish that goal. Crab tells Spongebob to stay on high alert, as he does not know where Plankton will strike next. He could be in a white van with candy, or at the playground in a trench coat. He, he could go to boating school and say he's a friend of Spongebob's parents. Keep an eye out. Only one in this case. <laughs> Enough, lad. It wasn't that funny. 
get back to work! SpongeBob tries to go home that night while Plankton starts to sweet talk him. <gasps> oh no, it's already started! SpongeBob, Budhead warned us about these types of people. You see them at school, and at PetSmart, and across the street on a rocking chair. They're groomers. Is one of those tender, delicious. Krabby Patties. Are you sure you're talking about a Krabby Patty? Maybe you should ditch the computer and get an Alexa. Freud made some good points. And yes, I saw the Uncle Al video. SpongeBob realizes the van has no candy and runs home while Plankton swears revenge. That night, SpongeBob tries to go to sleep. Now this episode proves to me something very important. SpongeBob grew up in the suburbs, not the hood. Because here in the hood, you don't just have 12 locks on your doors, you have them on your windows. Trust me, they will find a way. Plankton breaks in, I'm guessing for the window, and gets ready to put his plan into motion. Since this is Suburb Bob Supper Pants, oh god, that took forever to say, I have to make something clear. I wish his perfect picket fences would impale him through the heart. Ouch! Stupid brain. Come back here, you swine! I don't know which college Plankton went to, but it seems to have been the Bill Cosby School of Body Control. Oh, remember that video? Because he puts a robot into SpongeBob's brain and forces him to sleepwalk against his will. First, he makes him go to Squidward's house and throw him more shade than the winter solstice. Shut your mouth, you mediocre clarinet player. You pretentious little insignificant artist. Your sniveling creations are worth less than a protozoan's waste! Plankton, you watch Frasier too? Sorry if he suddenly gets to be super relatable when you do voice work. Then he makes him go out for takeout, meaning steal a Krabby Patty. You can't fool me, Plankton. You want the Krabby Patty formula. You are going to hand deliver it to me personally. They make it to the chum bucket. This is my lab. <laughs> And this is my laboratory! Dude, I just got that joke. Plankton means for SpongeBob to drop the Krabby Patty into one of his devices so he can analyze the contents. However, before Plankton can achieve victory, SpongeBob starts to sound like George R.R. R. Martin at a local Wendy's. With your tasty, juicy, scrumptious, warm, steamy goodness. Steamy? Dude, are you sure you want a Krabby Patty specifically to one-up Mr. Krabs? In quick work, Plankton is stopped by his own hubris, and SpongeBob goes home. I'll settle for some fries! Ooh, what about spicy nugs? Oh wait, this was the 90s. Now honestly, while I like SpongeBob, I will contend that this episode is not anything special, which is fine. Lots of shows take a while to find their footing. And while I think season one is still funny, it's not as good as seasons two or three. Think B plus compared to an A minus. Langton was part of that footing. And better yet, like usual, there's a story behind his creation. Interestingly, he wasn't always meant to be a main character. Ever so long ago, I talked about this concept I call the Elijah Michelson treatment. Basically, it's when a character is meant to be one-off or minor, but the creators like them so much that they greatly expand their presence. Normally, this is seen as a bad thing, as it was with Star vs. The Forces of Evil, and gave us characters like Mina Loveberry. However, Plankton is probably one of the most successful cases in animation. After Sideshow Bob, PC Principal, and Bill Cypher, of course, but he's up there. Originally, Plankton was only supposed to be in this one episode, and maybe one after, depending on how things went. Like, he was meant to be so one-off that the executives actually toyed with the idea of him being voiced by Bruce Willis, not Doug Lawrence. Wasn't he in Do America? Come on, wouldn't you have done him for 10 grand plus expenses? Just close your eyes and pretend he's a chick. Thankfully, show creator Steven Hillenberg put a stop to that. Steven told Doug Lawrence, one of the show's producers and Plankton's voice actor, 
that Plankton might appear again if they could include him, which honestly sounds like an uber polite way of saying no. Doug Lawrence, however, loved Plankton and saw potential in him, so much so that he wrote an outline of various Plankton episodes and gave them to Steven. Many of these ideas later became episodes for pre-movie era Plankton. For the first few episodes, Doug pretty much was Plankton, as in he wrote most of the Plankton-related episodes, or he would still heavily contribute. After all, he had to be like, I need to be able to say this, or I don't think I could do that. Another interesting behind-the-scenes feature is his voice. Plankton's voice is kind of different in the earlier seasons, a little deeper. Same with SpongeBob. Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. Wow! A golden spatula. But Doug has always described him as Gregory Peck meets Tony the Tiger. That's interesting. Originally, Doug auditioned for SpongeBob using the same voice he would later use for Plankton, which makes me think scenes like this. Get out of my head! Leave my brain alone! <laughs> Never. Never! Are inside jokes. Unfortunately, they already went with Tom Kenny. You know how sometimes SpongeBob uses a deeper voice? I will put on this uniform and assume my duties as. Hall Monitor! Well, that's Tom making fun of Doug. Anyhow, big high five, Doug. LinkedIn's debut episode made the point he was a tiny dude who hated being tiny, was fond of adult humor, and it was his lifelong ambition to steal the formula. Later episodes built on this. For example, there's his computer wife, Karen, who in this episode is a normal computer. Seaweed. 50% sea, 50% weed. Karen is named after Steven Hillenberg's wife, and voiced by Jill Talley, who is married to Tom Kenny. Dang, that's pretty roundabout. Karen and Plankton have the relationship personality of an old married couple. Wired integrated female electroencephalograph. You always pull that one out. You're not a real wife. You're just a computer. Both can be kind of snippy, but at the end of the day, they do love each other and would do anything to help. Plankton even went as far is to give Karen a great serenade, professing his love to her in single cell anniversary. I loved it, but not as much as I love you, Plankton. I love you too. Even if it was only to obtain the formula, but hey, it's still a really nice gesture. However, there are times when I'm not too fond of this dynamic. Like that one time when he replaced Karen with, ugh, this. Thankfully, to my knowledge, neither Karen has ever wanted to speak to the Magia, so they're okay in my book. And while Plankton can occasionally be a bit of a grumpy husband, Karen will pay him back in kind. There was that one time when Plankton unplugged Karen so he could go screw around with Mr. Krabs' mom. Plankton, don't you dare! And now to woo that beloved creature. Ew. Thankfully, when she comes back online, she makes sure to return the affection. What did you say? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought you said. Honey bunch. <laughs> Although, while I love Plankton, I must say that he's probably the most tragic character in the whole show. Like, way more than Krabs or Squidward. You could write a whole Shakespearean play about him. Compared to Krabs, Plankton is actually super intelligent. I went to college! Yes, I know, Blankton, you could stop repeating yourself. We already established it. However, there is one way Krabs beats him out in terms of intellect, empathy. I know it's weird to say, but when running a business, knowledge and book smarts are not everything. Sure, you need somebody to keep track of stuff for accounting and whatnot, but how else will you attract customers? You'll be forced to eat at the chum bucket. You mean you kidnapped us just to sell us your fast food? You little twerp. Hey! Except for the occasional episode, Krabs knows what people want when they go to a restaurant. Outside of tasty food, that is. Food! Water! Atmosphere! 
Nobody goes to a restaurant for atmosphere. Well, sorry, I like to breathe, old man. Do you even know the secret cool guy handshake? Then there's their bond, or lack thereof. We learn in the episode, Friend or Foe, that Mr. Krabs and Plankton used to be bestest friends when they were children. As a testament to their bond, they were even born on the same day. Aww. <laughs> Things were all peaches and cream! Aww. Both were outcasts, Krabs for being the Kenny McCormick of the town, and Plankton for being smart. In their spare time, the two frequented a restaurant called Stinky Burgers. Ew, I would never eat there. Even if neither could afford the food. <laughs> Stinky love the kids. That's why we like you so much, Stinky. You always deliver the goods. Dude, this is a paid promotional video. I hate that I have to keep making these jokes. No wonder the restaurant closed. Anyhow, the two realized that making burgers earned the respect of bullies, and they resolved to do the same after Stinky closed by order of the health department. <laughs> But Stinkies had been shut down by order of the health department. Yeah, okay. I know it's a kid show. I get it. I'll play along. Sadly, both feuded over who got credit and their overall ambitions. Krabs wanted to support the customer. Plankton wanted to take over the world. <laughs> What about satisfying the customer? Barnacles to the customer! I'm talking about ruling the world! <laughs> okay, that was an embellishment, but could you blame him? Even if I don't condone said behavior, because honestly, world domination seems boring. I understand it. Plankton was bullied all his life. Is it any wonder he isn't so keen on helping his fellow classmates? To make matters worse, Krabs and Plankton's new patty unwittingly poisoned old man Jenkins. Well, one of them. That is. Well, he is old. Hey, that guy's like family to me. This is bad news because he helped Mr. Krabs get clothes when his mommy couldn't afford them. That's a good thing old man Jenkins was kind enough to spare his last washcloth. Oops! I missed a spot. Yeah, but he gave you rags. How is he family in that case? I'm sure you could find something better at the Salvation Army. In a struggle, or rather a couple, they tore apart the recipe they had created. And as Plankton stormed out, a miracle happened. To Krabs, not to him. <laughs> I've done it! I discovered the perfect patty batter! The customers are eating glass? Ew, gross! Plankton made chum burgers using science and memory, and it tasted like cow placenta. What you think? <laughs> I'm gonna try one of Rag Boy's burgers. Well, Krabs' tasted decent enough. We can actually hold it down! Yeah! Krabby Patty was born, and with it, Plankton's La Vendetta. I'll show you, Krabs. I'll steal that cursed recipe from you one day, and I won't stop till I do! From that day forward, Krabs and Plankton became sworn enemies. The sad part is, while Krabs found his calling, Plankton had so much squandered potential. He's a genius. He went to college. He could easily do anything he wanted with his life, especially in a hick town like the Bikini Bottom. Bottom. To make matters worse, LinkedIn is a stellar inventor and great with technology. He could easily get a job in, say, STEM, or run one of those infomercials that come on at 4 a.m. I'm sure he would make Stan's grandpa happy. If he wanted to run a business, he could do that. Business being the key word here, not a restaurant. But he wasted his life to show up to his oldest friend and chase a wasted dream. Decades down the toilet, and he's no closer to accomplishing that goal. You just wait, Krabs. Next time, I'll... Yeah, who am I kidding? Sam, dude! Stop bumming me out! Kinda like Squidward, it's something we see all too often in real life. And it's absolutely tragic to say the least. He practically lives in squalor because he can't afford the upkeep. He has to eat holographic meatloaf. 
and he had to basically make himself a wife. At least Krabs has Pearl. Not in a weird way, I mean, ew. But he has somebody living and breathing. Plankton has a cold, unfeeling computer which lacks an arm. To make matters worse, any progress he makes is only temporary because status quo is a thing. And I'll get to that when I get to that. Then there's the fact we learn that Plankton is basically the one who made it out, which only adds to it. He's kind of like Nina from In the Heights, but way more likable. In Plankton's army, Plankton's plan to steal the form fails for the millionth time, and he isn't able to get big tough guys to help him. I am endeavoring to misappropriate the formula for the preparation of affordable comestibles. I don't get it. Maybe they all thought you were calling them stupid, Frasier. Thinking he can get his family's help, he calls them up, expecting them to be excellent henchmen and or partners in crime, only to learn he was the only member of the Plankton family who wasn't inbred. Hey, look here, buddy. It's Cousin Plankton. Yeah! <laughs> I've been away from home longer than I thought. Wait, Plankton's from Ohio? I knew that place sucked. Only thing I like about Ohio is the theme parks, and now I have more reason to hate it. Oh, and his real name is Sheldon. Sheldon J. Plankton. Yes, that's my first name. <laughs> Sheldon! Maybe Chuck Lorre took inspiration from this show. But come on, dude, Sheldon is a cool name. For a snail or a bastiodon, not a plankton. At least you aren't a girl because then you would get some stupid old lady name like Abigail. That's mine. Plankton is able to convince his family to steal the formula by promising them all the root beer they can drink. And what about root beer? Root beer? Good thing they're literal Plankton. I'm sure a two liter would do it. Plankton puts his plan into motion. You planted grass? Grass? <laughs> <laughs> and does this to Krabs and Squidward. You'll never get away with it, Plankton! You're right. The pipes are much too narrow. Even Squidward, like Squidward did nothing. Wait, earlier in the episode, Krabs made SpongeBob do this to get him out of the plot. SpongeBob. Why don't you go hose out the men's room? With pleasure, sir! They needed to get that toilet from somewhere. How did he not know what was going on? Unless they just went in the ladies' room, which is even dirtier than the boys' room. I'm mean, guys, I'm sorry, but we bleed out of places. Plankton uses his family's combined strength to break into Krabs' safe. That's it, a little to the left. Curse you, Plankton, and your ability to join together to form a working human ear! Only to learn Krabs is the reason Upton Sinclair was a best-selling author. Four heaping pounds of freshly ground... Plankton? I warned you. Well, there was that robot chicken sketch. But wait, that's crueler once you remember the episode One Course Meal, when he had that nightmare that his family members were eaten by whales. And it's part of the reason why he's so afraid of actual whales, despite having extended contact with Pearl. Krabs, you a-hole! In truth, Krabs is not a monster at this point in time. Even if he thought he killed the health inspector, opened up a sweatshop to sell jellyfish jelly, made his employees pay him, him, charge Spongebob $100 an hour to work for him, and Patrick $50 an hour, and sold Spongebob's soul for 62 cents. No, he is a total saint. Regardless, he just wanted to get Plankton's goat. And he did that. 99% that is. Hey, why ain't you running? Well, I can't read. Get out of here! <laughs> Yet you can't tell apart a drawing? What backwards hick cult sponsored homeschooling program did you go to? The true secret formula is at home, under his mattress. <laughs> Curse you, Squidward! Just be glad you did not check his sock drawer. Let's just say he keeps more than his money in there. However, Plankton's schemes are probably the biggest part of his character and the one thing that stayed consistent throughout the show's run. Every time Plankton appeared in season one, it was to steal the secret formula, with the exception of the episode Walking Small, where he wanted to build an extra chum bucket. 
But hey, he still had a scheme. That counts, right? Plankton will do whatever to seal the formula, but fail at the last minute. Probably his biggest obstacle is SpongeBob himself. He will take advantage of SpongeBob's naivete and overall stupidity to make a scheme work. Lincoln, welcome to the Chum Bucket, where the show gets as close as it can to a child custody battle. <laughs> Plankton is the abusive daddy who wins, and he demands that Spongebob better shape up and act like he loves him, or he's gonna kill him and put his brain in a robot. So get cooking. It's your choice, Bobby boy. You can either become a burger-flipping robot, or you can have your soul sold for 62 cents. Karen says the best way to get to Spongebob is to treat him with kindness. Plankton tries to spoil Spongebob Rotten, but Bobby Fletcher becomes more and more insufferable until an argument breaks out. No! Don't back sass me! <laughs> what? That's it, mister. You just lost your brain privileges. Plankton goes with the robot option, but Robobob Chef pants. I put the brain in the robot, you know. That sounds like a flub Doug Lawrence made during recording and they just left it in. Hey, I'm not complaining. I do that all the time. I'm doing it right now. Anyhow, the robot is much worse than SpongeBob. Get welded. Wait! I command you! Make me a crappy patty! I don't wanna. In a rash with anger, Plankton gives him back to crabs because he can't afford therapy, antipsychotics, or massages with John Redcorn. Ah! Or there's imitation crabs, where Plankton builds a robo crab suit to get the formula. Nothing stands between me and that secret formula now. Ha, 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 ha. Ouch. Unfortunately, crabs foresaw Plankton doing this somehow and planned ahead, making SpongeBob do an elaborate song and dance to give him the formula. But we did everything you said. I followed all the rules. I even ate 105 black licorice jelly beans through a straw. That sounds like a euphemism. Before Plankton can get the formula, Crab storms in and demands to know just what in the effing F is going on. How could you do this, SpongeBob? Giving me secret formula to this imposter! Unfortunately, SpongeBob is dumber than a bag of day-old hamburger runs and doesn't notice Krabs somehow got an update and a new voice and he farts in public. I'm the real Mr. Krabs! Don't listen to him, he's obviously a robot. Dude, that last one should have been a dead giveaway. SpongeBob forces the two crabs to answer various questions to see who's the real one. And to make matters worse, he intentionally gives the real Mr. Krabs the toughies. If we're discussing the secret formula on the third Wednesday in January and it's not raining outside, after we gargle with vanilla pudding, what do we do? Uh, Paz? Oh, wait! SpongeBob! Give me another chance! So long, imitation crabs! What a D word. I'm surprised SpongeBob still has a job considering how he almost killed his own boss. Now, I don't think I have some favorite scheme in particular, but there's some I prefer to others, if that makes sense. My favorite Plankton episode overall, however, is probably the algae is always greener, simply because it's when I find Plankton to be the most relatable. Another failed scheme down the drain. So long, shrimp! Plankton doesn't like how his life sucks compared to Krabs. When am I gonna get some real food? Mr. Krabs gets to eat real food. Just look at his daughter. She's as big as a whale. If I were scared of her. Karen says that if he wants to know what Krabs' life is like so badly, he should reenact that Futurama episode from the final season, using a machine to find out how he would fare if he were in Krabs' shoes. Let's see. No. 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 Aha! Wait, Krabs can't wear shoes. I mean, there's a couple of scenes of him walking normally, but I'll go to Plankton switches lives with Krabs. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'd probably do the same thing. Hey, I would get thirsty. Plankton wakes up with Krabs' life. He runs the Krusty Krab, which somehow still has that name, despite the fact he's a Plankton, not a Krabs. Mm. 
Mr. Plankton? He's got fame and notoriety, and he wears corporate casual. However, per the title card, the algae isn't always greener. Not just because of Man Bear Pig, courtesy of the always super serial Al Gore, but because Plankton does not have the patience Krabs has. Sir! I thought I sent you away, Cretan. Just do what I do and spell out words in your head. Flagden can't have a nasty threesome with his patties just yet, because Spongebob demands a weekly performance review. The sauce, I don't know, you're using too much sauce, okay? Review's over. Uh, uh. I relate to Spongebob immensely in these moments. Stop reminding me of me! And he's even cheaper than Mr. Krabs. All he gives Pearl is a dollar. Go crazy. One dollar? You hate me! <laughs> yeah, Pearl's right. What is that even gonna buy you now? Shoe lint? To make matters worse, because he switched places with Krabs, Krabs now has his life. Uh, did I say the secret word? Amazing, Larry! I love that movie! However, Krabs is even worse than Plankton. At least you can argue his kind are only meant to wear one or two things, if even that. Krabs looks like he just came back from Burning Man! Good grief, he's naked! Dude, there are laws! You saw what happened to Sandy. Plankton is somehow able to get the patty back because SpongeBob believes in censorship. No, sir! No, sir! Got me. Well, at least it's underwire. Oh, crabs, you slide dog. You're totally putting toilet paper in there, aren't you? But he swears revenge. And as he's much too big to be blown through a straw, he gets to monologue. Even if I have to come back tomorrow, and the next day, 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 and the next day. Phone call, Mr. Plankton. And the next day, and the next day. Krabs, are you my sleep paralysis demon? It's not my fault Beetlejuice is on vacation to Rochester. Wait, where's the tour now? Realizing Krabs has it worse than him, Plankton goes home. It's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Goodbye, everyone. I'll remember you all in therapy. Sucks you probably can't afford it, though. My second favorite is Krabs versus Plankton, as it's a courtroom drama, and I am especially fond of those. Except She-Hulk, but it did try. Plankton falls on the restaurant's wet floor and, spurned on by a few customers, decides to sue Krabs for the Krabby Patty formula instead of actual money. Oh, the pain! <laughs> I'll have to sue for my pain and suffering! Sue! At least you didn't pull a Lucky Kleinschmidt and slip on pee-pee, then you'd get $53,000 never have to work another day in your life. Plankton puts on a full show and dance and seems to awe the jury. My dreams of completing a marathon like I promised my old Grammy have been dashed. I'm sorry, Graham Graham. Is this the same Graham Graham whose hair and clothes you stole? Now, one of the best parts of the later seasons was Plankton's schemes. They were like Mrs. Puff's boating tests. Usually good, but sometimes they overdip. Likely because Duck Lawrence was one of the few pre-movie show staff to stay on, his episodes were typically pretty good. He maintained his adult-type humor and sarcasm, so he could usually make a bad episode tolerable, or at least get a chuckle out of me. Like the episode where Gene Simmons guest starred, and he cursed out an entire family. Hey, you can't talk to my grandson like that. Someone ought to put you in a mental hospital. Someone should put you in a box floating down the river, Grandma! True, sometimes this could be somewhat tiresome, as many of his schemes were really out there, or made no freaking sense, like someone's in the kitchen with Sandy. Plankton learns that Sandy has a pelt, and he pulls an imitation crabs 3.0. You don't look so good. Hey, you gotta stop eating at the Chum Bucket. That stuff will rot your insides. Lies! Lies! The Chum Bucket will always be my favorite restaurant! Okay, for some reason, I actually like this moment. I don't know, maybe it's just corny nostalgia talking, but I still think it's hilarious. Because Squidward is apathetic, and SpongeBob is stupid-booped, LinkedIn 
wants to know how a Krabby Patty is made. Sandy, you're back! Yep, that Krabby Patty was so darn good, I gotta see how you make one. Use a mossy food play? Don't you have somewhere better to be? I'm pretty sure Golden Girls is on at 8.30. That's so stupid and time consuming. Knowing how dedicated SpongeBob is, why would he give his close friend the formula? Why you and me are closer than two catfish in skillet. Specifically prohibits the disclosure of the secret formula to friends, even when those friends are, quote, closer in two catfish in a skillet. At least with Mr. Krabs, he created the formula, and that's his boss, so the robot Krabs disguise isn't that out of the ordinary. Besides, previous episodes show that you could just walk up to the cash register, buy a patty, and go. One Krabby patty, please. Or what about the time when he pretended to be SpongeBob's grandma? It's me, your dear old great Krabby boss. Cause suddenly she's really small now and she doesn't make cookies. Another tedious episode, Plankton is spending time with his grandma. They're realizing he can go Big Bad Wolf, meets Mrs. Doubtfire, and pretend to be an old lady, the formula is nearly his. My delicate digestive system has special needs, and I'll need to see a complete list of ingredients. Here you are. Thanks, Sonny. I'm just going to take it home. I left my bifocals there. Seems like a foolproof plan, right? Well, for some reason, he doesn't attempt this. Seriously, at least show it's stupid. Like, maybe he'd have to change tactics or Krabs catches on. Instead, he wanders around town and tells SpongeBob he has to go take a nap and Mr. Krabs is safe. I want to know all about your life, your job, where the secret formula is. <laughs> I mean... Okay, even as a kid, this episode made no sense. Why are you not having fun? Why? Because I don't knit, you nitwit! But that part was funny. Then there was that other time he dressed up as Gary to steal the formula, which I'm not gonna touch because it's just another boring episode. I do like the torment he goes through, especially with the little pill. But it's just another tired example of Plankton dresses up as somebody close to SpongeBob to get the formula, but fails. You kind of have to wonder why he doesn't just dress up as Spongebob. SpongeBob at this point and ask for the formula. But I'd argue that compared to Krabs, the Flanderization in the later seasons is kind of justified, especially in terms of his schemes. Like he was doing it so often that Krabs and SpongeBob were better able to expect what he was doing. Running out of options, he began scraping the bottom of the barrel, and that's why I think he has an extra layer of tragic. 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 You remember Everybody Hates Chris? Because honestly, Krabs is one of the many reasons Plankton keeps going. Plankton might be just about to turn over a new leaf or let go of his ambition, and Krabs is right there to keep him from the straight and narrow. Another self-fulfilling prophecy. In fun, SpongeBob starts to wonder if Plankton would be nicer if he had one extra friend. I bet if he had just one friend, he wouldn't be such a meanie. Which, not gonna lie, considering friend or foe, he isn't that far off the mark. SpongeBob invites Plankton out to Jellyfish Fields, but all he can think of is World Conquest. All knees will bow to Plankton. Hail Plankton! I win! Once he gets a little into the game, SpongeBob teaches him the fun song, and the two begin to bond. Wait, this is basically his debut episode, but remastered. People complain that the later episodes were rehashes. This is technically a rehash. Eh, the song is pretty good, I'll give it a pass. Now many people, including those in and out of universe, think this was just a ploy for Plankton to steal the formula. Befriend the SpongeBob. Then, when the timing is just right, take the Krabby Patty! And it kind of was at first, because while it originally starts off as such, Plankton forgets about it soon enough. The only reason he continues the plan is Karen and Krabs. You're forgetting the mission. What are you talking about? You're going native, Plankton. Look at yourself. What? Krabs does not think Plankton is being friendly with Spongebob out of pure altruism and runs down to the movie theater to warn him. Turns out he's right in a sense. He's deceiving you! Reach into his pocket now and take what he's got! <laughs> SpongeBob feels betrayed, and Plankton is pretty upset himself. All right, it's true. I tricked you to get the Krabby Patty, but then you showed me friendship. 
But at the last minute, he goes full Decepticon. Oh, not really. Being evil is too much fun. Oh, darling. <laughs> I knew nothing would ever tear us apart. But imagine Karen supported this change, or Krabs wasn't putting doubts in his head. Would Plankton have given up his evil ways? Or what about the episode where Plankton tries to date Betsy, Mr. Krabs' mom? Which again, I hate to reiterate things, but it's freaking gross. Not just the age difference, but also the fact they probably knew each other since Plankton was a kid. Like, I know at first he didn't realize that was Krabs' mom, but you'd think he would stop once he found out. Oh, Sheldon. Oh, Mrs. Krabs. Plankton, at first, wants to legitimately date her because he loves her, even if it means getting rid of Karen and his morals. Then he does whatever he can to woo her. How did you know I wanted a hat? Have you been spying on me? It was just a lucky guess. But Krabs thinks that Plankton is only going out with her to get the formula, because if he were family, he would get to know. Your mother knows the Krabby Patty formula? It's an old Krabs family recipe, and you're not family. Krabs basically sabotaged what could have been a beautiful thing out of pride. Albeit, I do understand, I would hate it if my eldest enemy was my new daddy. Well, what about that episode where Plankton turns the chump bucket into a gift shop. Come on, this has got to be a joke, right? I'm serious, Krabs. Soon the chum bucket will be a nice little store for bric-a-brac and bubblegum. Sure, it's a complicated scheme, but there's a couple moments where he seems legitimate. Especially this scene right here. Yo, uh, Plankton? Eugene? You still there? Yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> Good. Like, imagine what would have happened if Krabs did not give him the formula. Of course, Plankton falls off the wagon and goes back to being Plankton. My diabolical and extremely convoluted plan worked! I never give you the formula! I fooled you with an even more convoluted charade! Dude, they're like Kyle and Cartman. Oh well, we can't all be paragons of loveliness like Mr. Krabs. Well, that was Sheldon J. Plankton. True, it wasn't his fault that life kicked him in the teeth, but it is his fault for how he responded to it. Plankton could have done something great with his life, but instead, he wallows away, trying to chase a wasted dream. It makes him not only relatable, but gives him an extra layer of tragedy. Thanks a bunch to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I am young and female, but I'm not an easy mark. I might be swimming with piranhas, but I still need a shark. Right, I get it! Well, excuse me, Mr. Impatient Sheldon Pants. That's right, I know your name is Sheldon, but if that's what you want, fine. I'll end the video.